These trans alpaca farmers are seeking refuge in the rural west. This is what it takes to be safe as a queer person, and that's f***ed up. This is my home, and uh, you defend your home. We're in Custer County, Colorado, a western rural part of the U.S. where almost 70% of residents voted for Donald Trump. I think it's a fear of the unknown. You know, you're in a small town, right? Beyond the streets lined with churches and weapon shops, the eco-friendly ranch of 170 alpacas is serving as a safe haven for trans people. So our mission here is to uh, uplift queer folk. Like really, that's what it comes down to. It's definitely found family. The ranch is providing a new space for queer people to flourish. The, the city borders isn't where queerness ends and you can't pretend like it is anymore because in here. The trans alpaca owners describe themselves as anarchist, tenacious, and free. Welcome to the Tenacious Unicorn Ranch. Growing up, I had no exposure at all to, to, to being trans. Yeah. Uh, dinner's ready. And I come from a religious family. The thought that you could be the gender you were supposed to be was never like presented to me. I haven't done my nails in years, yeah, but that's yeah. fine. This used to be my signature. And it's fine, I don't care. But, but the end goal, freedom, um, is worth it. Penny pictured an environment where transgender people wouldn't experience the isolation she had felt. So she launched the Unicorn Ranch project with her business partner, Bonnie, who shared her vision. You know, I had no community. I had no reliance on my family. There was a certain point around eight or nine years into my transition that I decided I need to be visible. When Penny transitioned at the age of 35, she says she was frequently harassed and abused while working. I, I did my transition very publicly, like I was working as a front-end manager at a Target. A study found 90% of trans people surveyed experienced harassment or discrimination at work. The remote ranch is serving the exact purpose Penny and Bonnie had hoped for with Jay. She's in the early stages of her transition. Pretty much every trans person wants to like disappear entirely from the world in, during their transition. And this is like a bit of a taste of that, you know. The ranch is a 20 minute drive from Westcliff, a conservative town tucked away among mountains. It's a designated dark sky area where people can stargaze any time of the year. Before coming to the ranch, I was pretty much given an ultimatum because of my participation in the BLM uprisings. My parents are very conservative. Um, I'm not gonna compromise my principles, so okay, I leave. It, it really is therapeutical to you know not feel like you have to hide yourself. Almost one out of five trans people surveyed say they have experienced homelessness at some point due to their identity. With the uptick of violence against trans people, especially trans women of color, the ranch members grew. I mean, it was directly because of the tipping point that was the Trump administration. Just like the last administration, this administration is doing nothing. Conservative lawmakers in many states have recently pushed a slew of anti-trans bills targeting the youth's access to gender-affirming health care. The ranch is currently home to around 10 queer residents. You're in extreme cases of homelessness or danger, we do pull people up onto the ranch and kind of get them resettled. We're trying to set up solid venues for queer people and be able to enjoy their life as opposed to get through their life. Part of enjoying life for Penny, Bonnie, and Jay is surrounding yeah, themselves with around 170 alpacas that have mostly been donated or rescued. So do some of them have names? Um, this uh, stalwart lady here is uh, Snow. <laughs> How did he get his name? A uh, good Pepe Le Pew because he's always up in that corner watching the ladies. <laughs> like, he's really creepy. <laughs> What do you love so much about them? Their, their character and their personality is really what draws me. I don't know, like the way that they walk and the way that they run, like they're very like their own thing. I think they are like intrinsically queer animals. Like. Wow, she's so soft. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Uh, so when you're moving and when you're stopping. But even at the remote ranch, the queer residents are not clear of danger. Penny is taking all measures to ensure safety. Moving! Cover! 
In March, armed intruders trespassed onto the property. It prompted the ranchers to arm themselves to prepare for any future attacks. That's, that, that's enough to get you to start doing drills like this. Like, I, this is our life now. Are you prepared to do this drill any time? Any time of day, uh, any moment. We have, our, uh, we have our vests readily available. Before intruders trespassed onto the property, the ranchers had received harassment and death threats online. People were warning us to like load our firearms and get ready for people to harm us. So, um, and we and it was just message after message like this. Well, it was terrifying. I, I, like it was the worst case scenario coming true all of a sudden. Conflicts began to escalate after the annual Independence Day parade in 2020 was canceled due to the pandemic. Custer County residents took to the streets to protest. Confederate flags, three percenter flags, armed people, everybody shouting about Trump. Like it was extremely fascistic. The three percenters is a prominent anti-government militia movement in Colorado that's classified by the FBI as part of the far right. And we went back on social media and we were just like, hey, Nazi parade in Westcliff today. Those comments brought anti-trans sentiment out into the open. A local paper reprinted an article about the ranchers with editor's comments describing them as a bunch of hate-filled xenophobes obsessed with violence. On top of the drills and cameras, the ranch is working on beefing up security with an additional fence. Why is this fence necessary? Uh, to prevent people from, or, or to slow people down coming onto the property. The ideal is that doing all this passive defense yeah. means we don't ever have to use it. means them. the guns become irrelevant. As the ranchers travel through town daily, they're cautious about which businesses to interact with. This place, we do, yeah, you'll never go to this place here. They've got a uh, Blue Lives Matter. Yeah, that, that's one of them we won't go into. Before the ranch was attacked by intruders, they say their car was aggressively tailed. One car would follow, one car would wait, and, uh, and that went on for about a week until it escalated to them coming onto the property. It would get real cool, real quick, if people just stopped trying to kill us. <laughs> it's weird that that's funny. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, we've entered that disassociative phase of, like, the violence against us is humorous. That's, that's how you know there was like months of trauma leading into this. <laughs> Yet in the majority conservative town, many residents have opened up to embrace the new community. The unicorn ranchers start off every morning at a coffee shop they now call home base. I'm a uh, ordained minister, Bible teacher. I would definitely be identified as conservative. But I was so interested in who they were when they showed up in my shop that we may land at different places on all kinds of things, but I am going to continue in friendship with who they are and be loving. We, like, we were given a lot of hope to put ourselves out there after we met Steven. Because if you're a good person, your politics aren't kill others that aren't like you, and we can agree with each other. <laughs> Penny emphasizes the importance of contributing to the larger community and volunteered to lead aluminum and steel recycling for the entire county for free. It isn't just about the ranch. We're part of a whole community and that matters. Like meeting the, the amazing people that inhabit this valley and setting up long lasting, mutually beneficial relationships, fostering community, that's what we're here for. The Tenacious Unicorn Ranch has one focus mission to expand and shelter larger queer communities in all spaces across the U.S. We're really looking forward to in the next couple of years being able to find other queer communities that we can then like get hooked up with a piece of land and then get them a starter herd of alpaca. Despite the threats they face, the ranchers remain committed to their mission to live freely and provide a family atmosphere to those who may have lost theirs. The dangers that we face didn't scare me away, it emboldened me. I knew that we had to be loud. People need to see that we will stand up and be tenacious against any threat. <laughs>